Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Emotional Freedom with the Numbers. I see people here and no faces, so that's okay. Ah, oh, there's a face. There's another face. Hello. Good to see you I guys. Think, I think <laughs> it kicked everybody's video off. Oh, did it? Well, there's a lot of funky stuff going on with technology because of all the solar flares. So we'll just have to be patient with it. There's Fiona. Hello. Good to see you guys. So are you guys excited to explore emotions and number frequencies today? Awesome. All right. Does everyone here know their ruling number? Okay, excellent. If you want to pop them in the comments for me, that'd be great. So we're going to talk about the numbers themselves and some of the emotional states that are normally associated with those numbers. Now, this is not everything. So every number has the capacity to experience all the emotions, but there are certain emotional states that are generally um, common for those particular numbers to feel and experience more often than maybe some other emotional states. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that and what those states are, because that'll help us not only understand our ruling numbers better, but also to understand our, um, our daily energies. So as we're moving through each day of the week, we have a certain energy associated with each one of those days. Has, has, um, does everybody know numerology here, at least basic foundational, or are, is anyone new to it and doesn't know how to calculate the day energy? I think Fiona might not know how to calculate the day energy. She'll have to let me know. Stephanie, do you know how to calculate that? Yes, I do. You do? Okay. And do you, I, do you know are you able to see my comment in the chat? Um, hold on, I'll pull that up. I've had some issues with Zoom, so no, I'm not sure. I don't see it. Okay, all right. So I'm a ruling number eight. Okay, good to know. Well, no wonder you came to an emotional <laughs> workshop. Because <laughs> eight is an emotional number for sure. So our 11s. Fiona, what's your ruling number? Um, can I find it from the chart that you did, the birth no. chart? No, oh. that's a whole different system. Oh, so, well, then I don't know. Okay, so, so take your birth date and add up the days of your, uh, the digits of your birth date. So what is your birth date? 08151967. Okay, so if you add up all those numbers and reduce it to a number between two and 11, that'll give you your ruling number. And hold on a second, I'll just help you with that. So you're a ruling number 10, okay, which is, thank is, you. is equivalent to a one for this conversation. So, and, and beyond our ruling numbers, we're talking about the day energies as well. So really understanding that we can use this no matter what our ruling number is to understand the people in our lives, if we know their ruling numbers, and also to understand the daily energies so that we can know and anticipate how we might be feeling, how other people may, might be feeling on any particular day, given those energies. So this is a foundational num numerology that I'm talking about right now. You guys know me more for the advanced Egyptian numerology with like Fiona was referencing with the cards and the deck of playing cards and all of that. But there is some great value in understanding the foundational numerology and just understanding the numbers as a whole. This can be a really good place to start. So I like this for this discussion. I also like this because um, we can understand our feeling states better and how to shift those feeling states more easily when we understand the, um, the higher expression of the numbers and the lower expression of the numbers in terms of our feeling states and how you can just shift easily. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're just gonna take a look at that. So I'm gonna share a screen. Well, first of all, before I do that, I wanna say that today is a day number five. So today is a very emotional day. Also, if I look at the more advanced numerology combined with that, there's a lot of five energy today. 
So a lot of emotions going on today. We're also a couple of days away from a, a full moon. So really intense emotional stuff probably coming up for a lot of people today, which is one of the reasons I chose today to do this workshop and, um, and really help you guys know that you don't have to be a victim of your emotions. You, you get to have all your emotions. You get to feel all your emotions. It's important to do that. Of course, we want to process our emotions. But I teach people how to do that in a, in a very quick way so that if you're in an emotional state that you're not particularly fond of, you don't have to stay stuck there. You don't have to just ride it out until it goes away. You actually have the power to choose what you want to feel in any given moment without bypassing your emotions. So this is what I go into very in great detail in my 10 week program where I walk you through the divine timing cycle and all of that that I'm starting on Monday. But for right now, I hope to give you just a little bit of a tool to start to understand that you at least have the power to do this. You may not fully understand how it works because that we spend a lot of time doing that in this program, but at least you'll have a general understanding of the fact that you can do this and how certain emotional frequencies are easier to shift to than others and how that impacts the the how that how you're impacted through the daily numbers and the daily energies and your own ruling number right so okay so we've got a 10 and 11 and a and an 8 here those are all emotional numbers because the um the 10 is a double 5 it's five plus five. So that's very emotional. So, um, so, so those are all um, numbers that are dealing with lots of emotion, but there are emotions associated with every number state, like I said, and I'm going to share a screen right now to show you what I mean. So, so here's some of the, and, and like I said, this is just some of the feeling states we would associate with these numbers, but the, the number one, which is also for the ruling number tens, in the highest expression, they are inspired and innovative. Those are the feeling states that they are in a lot of the time. In their lower expression, they can be lonely and bored. Now, again, there's other emotions that are associated, but for the purposes of this discussion, I just want to show you how to shift the frequencies. Two's trusting and loving in their highest expression, lowest expression, submissive and insecure. Three's excited and creative, lowest expression is grief and depressed. Four's are serene and responsive, lowest expression, discouraged and scared. Five, worthwhile and valuable, and lowest expression would be argumentative and hurt. The six is loving and trusting in their highest expression and their lower expression, anxious and rejected. Seven's thoughtful and brave when they're in their highest expression and in their lowest expression, scared and insecure. Eights are calm and grateful in their highest expression and in their lowest, they can become discouraged and anxious. And nines, their highest expression, joyful and stimulating and lowest expression, stupid and complacent. So if we take a look at, and I think I have to stop sharing and share it another way. If we take a look at that in terms of our feeling wheel. This is a tool that was developed by Gloria Wilcox originally to work with children in terms of identifying their emotional states. And it's a really valuable tool in terms of frequency because what we found is that every emotion has a frequency associated with it. And so if we look at um, what I shared about the um, about the, the ones, can you guys see that, that feeling states by number list again, or are you still seeing the um, feeling wheel? Somebody let me know. Just seeing the feeling wheel. Okay, all right, so now I, I know what Zoom is doing. Okay, so when we're looking at the feeling wheel and we go back to the ones, and we look at the feeling wheel and find lonely and bored. So lonely and bored are over here in this blue pie piece of sad, right? And if we, those are the lower expressions of the one or the 10. So when we go over to the opposite side of the pie piece, that would be where, I know it's not written here, but if you look at the words that are written here, it kind of um, goes along with this. 
is the um, innovative and inspired, right? That to me would fit in the joyful pie piece, innovative and, and inspired. So we found that you can go from one emotion on one side of the pie, and if you find the exact opposite side of the pie, right across from it, and choose an emotional state over there, you can easily shift frequencies because these emotions are on similar frequency states. So when you shift from one side to the other, I've noticed that there's a direct correlation between the highest expression and lowest expression of any given number. So when we're having a one energy day, for instance, if we're feeling any of these emotions over here in the blue pie piece, like the lonely, the bored, um, you know, inadequate, inferior, apathetic, that's another one that could be a one, right? They get lazy. Um, they don't want to, you know, do anything or take any action because, because they can, can get into that, that boredom, right? So they just, eh, whatever. Um, so that can be the, the one. And if you're having a one energy day and you're feeling that way, you know that it would be simple enough for you to choose an emotion in the pink pie piece of, you know, being energetic, excited, playful, um, you know, tapping into that innovation, tapping into that inspiration, the creativity, right? Those types of energies, you can pick something from over here and easily shift yourself into it to shift the trajectory of your whole day. Does that make sense? Everybody's nodding. Good. So I put this, I, I started realizing when I was playing, because I work with this feeling wheel a lot in my program, and, um, and I realized the correlation between the numbers and, and shifting across to different emotions. So we can take the next one. If we take the two, if we're on a two energy day, or if you're ruling number 11 or two, you would, um, you would experience the lowest expression as submissive and insecure. So let's find, does anybody see where those are on the feeling wheel? You can just unmute and let me know. In the scared. Yes, right here in the brown pie piece, submissive and insecure. So twos can often fall into feeling that way because they're they fall prey to a lot of codependent behavior. So those are two characteristics of codependence. So that comes from a lot of fear. And so across the pie piece, we have the, the peaceful pie piece. And the emotions that are easiest for the twos to shift into, or if you're on a two energy day, would be love and trust, right? Or any of these other emotions in this side of the pie, right? If you, you know, shift into peacefulness or whatever, but the, the, the ones that I most associate with the two energy is that love and trust, right? Twos are all about love. Elevens are all about love. <laughs> and and trusting your yourself, trusting your intuition, very intuitive number, right? So when you start to trust yourself, then you drop the insecurity. So you see how that works. It's 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 really giving yourself when you feel that love for yourself, you're not going to be in a submissive state to anyone else. You're going I've been to experience this recently, yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that, Adrian. Um, you know, I'm, I'm with a partner and just, um, you know, sort of new energies and that kind of stuff. And yeah, feeling a little bit, uh, submissive in some cases, which is so not like me and a little bit insecure in this, in the situation and really just, yeah, turning, turning that, um, using the feeling wheel. Cause I'm in Kristen's, um, brain game, by the way, awesome. Second time around. Thank and you. really, yeah, really choosing a, a different state of mind of that loving and trusting. And yeah, for a two, this is, it's so me. And I grew up with the two, right? Because that's my lesson with uh, being an 11 is that codependency. And I was in a codependent relationship pretty much my whole life. I went from my mother to my husband of 26 years and left that and realized what state I had lived in for such a long time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. And when you, then when you have that awareness, that's when you can make some changes and shift from this side of the pie to the other side of the pie and really come into your power, right? Yeah. And I've also felt rejected as well as a two because my yes. um my past partner had a, an emotional affair on me and I just was I just went into a tailspin. But I had to just come back inside of myself and find a piece of a piece of myself that I was missing because I gave that power away. Right. Yeah. 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 Which is, yeah. It's that crux of codependency that, that just is associated with the twos. Absolutely. And so thank you for sharing that and and, go ahead. Did you, Oh, so you can see, you know, how um, even through what Adrian just shared, like this really is, there is something to this, like there is a a personality traits that, you know, lead us to certain emotional states that are generally associated with certain numbers, certain frequencies. So if we're on a two energy day and you're feeling anything in this side of the pie, you understand that you can just shift yourself over to this once you learn the tools of how to do that, because the frequency states are so similar, they are so close. So if we take the threes now, threes, and I'm a, I'm a three of spades, which is the, the more advanced system, but because of that three, I do experience these elements of the threes and threes can, can suffer depression and grief. And I've definitely had some very severe depression that um, I've worked through. And, you know, every once in a while it will come back up and I'll be like, whoa, what, where's that from? But I'm a three. So this is something that, you know, is a lifelong go-to experience for me. And, um, and, and yet I don't have to stay in it anymore. You know, I used to stay in it and um, I've gotten to points where I've wanted to die and, you know, very serious levels of depression, which can be really common for threes. So, you know, and then that grief as well um, can also be associated with being a three um, of really just, um, you know, feeling, um, just feeling the, the, um, the disappointment in life, right? Um, the threes and nines are very similar that way, but yeah, just uh, grieving, not expressing yourself fully is, is a big thing for the threes because if you go across the pie piece, you go into that joyful and threes are creative. Three, three is about being excited. It's, you know, it's uh, entertainment, amusement, laughter, playful, like that's a three, right? And you see all of those things here in this joyful piece of the pie. But when the three gets stuck in this lower side in the, in the um, lower expression of, of its number, or if you're on a three energy day, like we will be, um, uh, well, actually we just were, yes, yesterday, yesterday, no. Saturday, sorry. We were on Saturday. So if you think back to Saturday, how were you feeling? Were you more experiencing the blue piece of the pie or were you more experiencing the pink piece of the pie? And just think back to, you know, what kind of day did I have Saturday? What did I do? Where was my mind at? Where, you know, what, what was what was going on? And that will give you a, a sense of what the three can be like. So you can shift from the depression from the 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 um from the grief and all of that into the joy into the creativity into the excitement and amusement and all of that fairly easily and and i wanted to say like think about a, a small child or a baby how quickly they're able to go from crying to laughing right because it's on this same frequency band So it is very easy and children are such a great example for us to understand how easily we can shift from one emotional state to the other. When we understand what energies are affecting us each day, we can be more aware of when we're in some of these lower expressions of that energy and go, oh, wait a minute, I want to shift into and tap into that higher expression of this energy that's available to me today. So, so let's take fours now. Um, who wants to find discouraged and scared? What pie piece is that? 
what color of the pie. We're still in the brown. <laughs> We're still in the brown, yep. <laughs> so for fours, discouraged and scared are um, part of, of their core lower expression of feeling. And if you think back when we were in a four energy year, that was 2020. How many people were scared in 2020? <laughs> Just think about that, right? There was so much fear. And um, that is, you know, part of that four energy in the lower expression. But if we move across the pipe to the green piece here, um, for fours, I like to associate serenity, serene and responsive, right? Because fours get stuff done. They're very organized. They're, they're about that stability. They're about uh, productivity. So I feel like that really encompasses some of the four energy there is that serene is, you know, fours are about nature. They love nature. They love to be outside. And for me, that's so serene. That's so um, calming and and just grounding, right? I, I definitely associate the four with grounding energy. So to me, that brings a lot of peace. And so I, I feel like for that, for those fours, that discouragement and the, and the fear, the being scared, it's very easy to shift into those things. And fours often naturally do that for themselves. They're, if they're feeling the, some of these um, emotions on the the lower expression of their number, they'll go outside and they'll spend time gardening or taking a walk in the woods or, you know, putting their feet, bare feet on the grass and things. They naturally do that to help themselves shift. So that's the fours. And then when we move into the fives, so see if you can find um, where, what pie piece, and I'll give you a hint, it's not actually written on the pie piece. So what pie piece do you think would, um, would accompany the, the emotions of being argumentative and feeling hurt? And it's, it's all in one pie piece. I'm guessing that would be in mad because of the irritated possibly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And hurt actually is in here but argumentative isn't, right? But the, um, the frustration, being angry, irritated, yeah, you could get argumentative for, and also being critical or skeptical too could bring in argumentative. So the fives can, can definitely fall into those patterns. Um, they are on the emotional plane too. So they're very emotional, emotionally expressive number. And they are also in the center of the chart. So they feel everything from everyone. Right, they're the ultimate empaths, and oftentimes this can get overwhelming. And their go-to can be to feel hurt, feel um, feel frustrated, feel argumentative, those types of things. But if they take their power back and they embrace their power on the opposite side of this pie piece, in this golden pie piece where the gold is, right? They start to feel worthwhile. They start to feel valuable. They feel appreciated, respected. Those are important things for the five, right? And this is where um, they can shift into so they can get out of that feeling of hurt and, and argumentative is really taking their own power back, really embracing their personal power. So that's for the fives. And then for the sixes, for the sixes, um, I chose a couple of um, common emotions for them of anxious and rejected. Where do you find those on the pie? In the brown scared. Mm -hmm. Back in the brown again. <laughs> we seem to spend a lot of time in fear with these numbers. So, and again, there are different expressions of these numbers. These are just a couple that I've picked for each number. But for the six, so I picked the, um, the rejected and the um, anxious, and that is over on this brown pie piece. So for the sixes, shifting into, and I definitely associate love with the six as well. So the loving and, um, and trusting, because they're very intuitive as well. So in that way, they're similar to a two. However, the, two, the twos are different from the sixes in that the sixes are... Um, coming from a mental place. 
The twos kind of do too, but the twos are on the emotional plane, whereas the six is on the mental plane. So they process things a little differently, and yet they have these similarities of loving and trusting and in, their, um, in their energy field, in their frequencies, in just a little bit of a different way. Um, also that intimacy with the two, because they're all about family, right? So shifting into some of those, um, you know, nurturing, I would associate with family as well. And, and just that balance that the two brings to bring that peace in the peace and ease, I think of with the two, I mean, with the six. So, you know, bringing that in will help relieve any anxiety or feelings of rejection or any of those other feelings they might be tapping into in this brown side of the pie piece. Any, um, any, anybody have a six in their life that they, um, a ruling number six in their life that they know that, that they've experienced this with? Yeah, I was married to one for 26 years. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, you know, how does this resonate with what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. And I'm actually in the process of doing a report, a divine purpose blueprint for someone in their six as well. So I'm, I'm surrounded by sixes. It's kind of crazy. Oh, it's so funny that I asked on that particular one then. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, let's move into the sevens now. So sevens in their lower expression are scared and insecure. So we're back again in the brown pie piece. <laughs> <laughs> we seem to be spending quite a bit of time there. Um, and like I said, you know, all the numbers can experience all these ranges of emotions, but scared and insecure is a big one for sevens. Um, and moving across that pie piece for them, thoughtful and brave are, are two of the words that I would associate with the higher expression of the seven. And, you know, bravery is, um, is a, a state of peace, I, I feel. It's also power, but it's also a state of peace because when you trust and you, and you are, are um, in a state of thoughtfulness, you are also feeling that confidence and that bravery, right? So that's um, some of the things I would associate with the seven. Sevens love to learn. So that thoughtfulness and really, um, considering and being patient to, to consider um, some of the things that they're encountering and what they can learn from it. That, that's you know very much about the seven. That helps them to trust themselves more, which is another big word for a seven. Another big feeling state is to trust themselves. They're also highly intuitive. So going to the eights, which we have an eight in our midst so she can verify whether she's experienced these things or not. So for the eights, what the couple of the emotions I picked were discouraged and anxious, which takes us back to which pie piece, Stephanie? Brown. <laughs> Brown. And do you, have you felt that way as an eight? Do you, do you associate those, those feelings as being um, familiar to you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, that giving up, right. Getting discouraged and just wanting to give up. And then the anxiety, of course, like, what is everybody thinking of me? What if, if I do this, you know, am I still going to have friends or, you know, is my family going to abandon me or whatever? Like there's a lot of that going on with the eights and then across the pie in the green state, you know, the eights can bring in a lot of calm, um, and also gratitude, which is not he, oh, what is actually is thankful over here. So gratitude, I associate a lot with the eights. Do you find that, um, that those things actually help pull you out of some of those lower emotional states? Oh, absolutely. Um, especially the gratitude. Um, I can remember being at some of my really low points and like tears streaming down my face, like feeling super helpless and overwhelmed and just saying like, I'm so thankful for, and then, you know, like listing things just to, you know, to shift that. Um, but definitely, um, the gratitude and, and the calm, um, I definitely resonate with that as well. Just being able to just be in situations that normally would be, you know, high level anxiety and just be able to be like, okay, let's, 
you know, step by step, let's get this done. Let's figure it out. How do we break it down? You know, that sort of thing. So yes. Resonates. Yes. Yeah, because the eights in their high side are, are are all about mastery. So mastering your emotions, mastering your mental state, all of that self-mastery, mastering your craft. And so they do, they can be calm in the face of all kinds of stuff when they're in their higher side. They have that capability to really be masterful in that way. And, um, and AIDS can really show us that, you know, that's possible for everyone else. And in, when you're in that mastery, you can access that abundance that's so much associated with the eight being that infinity symbol, right? But when you're stuck in the lower expressions, you can't access that abundance. Then you're, you know, I, so many eights that are, um, that are stuck in, you know, uh, issues of lack with lack of love, lack of money, lack of um, success, because they are stuck in those lower sides. And if they only knew that they could shift to that higher frequency state fairly easily, you know, by just moving across the pie piece, they could really access their greatness, right? So, and you know that for yourself. So thank you for sharing that. And finally, the nines. So there's a lot of different emotions I associate with the nines. Nines are a mental number, um, and yet they're very emotional too, as are all the numbers. We all have emotions that we tap into, but nines, sixes, and threes, their emotions are driven by their thoughts more than some of the other numbers. Um, sevens, I would also say that's true for. And, um, and so... With those numbers, um, you know, even though it's coming from an emotional or a mental state, they do that their thoughts do create the emotional states or or exacerbate emotional states. And for eights, I picked stupid and um, complacent. So where would you find that on the pie? And I'll give you a hint. One word is there, one word isn't. <laughs> sad. Yes, you got it. So stupid is over here in sad. And I feel like complacent and apathetic are pretty similar. So I, I, you know, put those two in there and across the, the way here is joyful, which, you know, the nine is about celebration. It's about joy. And I put stimulating for the nine too, because I feel like that's that mental stimulation, that, that conversation, those bigger ideas, the big picture ideas, um, stimulating, fascinating. You know, if you ever talk to a ruling number nine, you'll see like they've got some really interesting ways to see the world because they see things very big picture. And they also can tap into this great joy and celebration no matter what the circumstances when they are in their highest expression. Because they understand that if something's ending or going away, that it's creating space for something even better. And that's where the celebration comes in. That's where that, that um, interesting conversation comes in. But I've met a lot of ruling number nines who've been, who've grown up their whole life feeling like they're stupid and they're actually so brilliant. But the thing is, is they have these, these minds that see visionary, they're visionaries. So they see things way ahead of everyone else and because they do that, sometimes people think they're crazy or stupid because they're like, what are you talking about? That would never work or that would never happen. And then 10 years down the road, the nine's going, see, I told you so. Like, you know, because they saw it coming way ahead of everyone else. And, you know, they're, they're a great asset to our society in that way because they are able to um, lead us forward when they're in their highest expression. So being able to shift over from one side of the pie to the other, right? You know, another um, one for the eight is anger because, you know, in this mad pie piece, the anger with the eight, the eights can go from, you know, 
that they're they're often they're really calm for a long time and then all of a sudden they'll explode <laughs> they have an angry explosion and it's it shocks everyone because they're used to the eight being so calm <laughs> and then all of a sudden they they're like blowing up in this angry outburst they've had enough and they're finally going to blow it's like a volcano that's just building up and then it finally explodes but on the other side the eight in its higher expression is it's all about personal power and so you see how that goes right across the this this um pie here so what have you guys um what have you guys picked up let's see let me just check the comments what's the meaning of the outside ring and the middle ring oh that's a good question oh both your children are eights too so it's what i'm saying about the eight resonating with you fiona you've experienced this with them right um so you want to know about the different rings of the pie piece well they're just um there's really not too much importance placed on them. I, I follow the colors more than the, um, the, the individual um, uh, separations. So the center pie piece is just giving you a very base, simplistic emotion. And then you go into the next ring and it gives you a little bit more um, depth to the emotions. And then you move to the outer emotions there in the outer ring to just give you another. So for instance, let's look, angry is a good one to give, to understand this, right? If you're angry, are you, you're oftentimes frustrated as well. So if you move through that, that one line of the pie piece there, or if you're, what, what was interesting to me is that I spent a lot of time frustrated all the time and didn't realize it was in the same pie piece with angry and mad, and that it was even in the same sliver of the pie with angry. That gave me a whole new pers perspective on what frustration really is. And so then I'm like, oh, wow. So I'm really actually angry about something when I'm frustrated. <laughs> and that helps me to give a little more depth to the feelings that I might be experiencing. Does that make sense? And then of course, also to note, like every feeling that's possible to feel is not on this wheel. Like these are just some of the more common ones that help us to give names or identify our emotions. But like you saw today, I had a couple that weren't actually listed on here, but you can kind of see when you look at the different pieces of the pie where it might fit in. So that gives you a good idea of where you would want to shift over to on the opposite side of the pie when you're when you're working on shifting your emotional states. So that's kind of what I wanted to share about that because what I've found in the work that I've done and, you know, Adrian shared that she's in Mastering the Brain Game right now, which is the name of the 10 week program that I do that helps you move through these emotional states. But I definitely teach it from a numerology standpoint, don't I, Adrian? <laughs> yeah, I bring that numerology in all the time. I can't help it. I'm always talking about the numbers because I just love them. And I also feel like they give so much more depth to any conversation when you start understanding the energies. So, um, so I teach that program and we will be starting next week with a new a group round if you're interested in joining in. And um, just to... Um, explain, we go into much more detail. So obviously we can't do a whole lot today in terms of teaching you how to shift your emotional states and all of that and how that all works. But we go into that in great detail where we talk about the, um, where we talk about the, the science behind it and what's going on in your body and your brain and your hormonal system and your nervous system and all the things. And what, um, you know, how those emotional states and the thought patterns work together and what's going on and all that, and then how to interrupt that and shift it without bypassing anything. And then being able to, to, once you start mastering that piece of it, you start to be able to um, use your emotional states to help you create the things that you want, right? And when you do that, then you can really start experiencing things in life that you truly desire. We're always creating, but we may be creating things that we don't want, like more drama, more things to be afraid about, all of that, if we're staying in the lower expression of the numbers and these lower expression feeling states. 
there's no good or bad feelings. Every feeling has its place in time. You know, there are times when you need to and want to grieve when you've really experienced a loss, or there are times when it's appropriate to be angry if somebody's actually being severely abused. I would hope you would get angry and be moved to take some action about that. You know, there's there's appropriate times for these emotions in every side of the, of the pie. And most of the time, we don't want to stay stuck in the lower expression emotions because where our bodies are designed to only be in those emotional states for 15 minutes or less, because those put us in the sympathetic nervous system and the fight flight nervous system. It's a survival mechanism. So we were never designed to live there. We were designed to live in the higher expression of the numbers in those higher vibrational feeling states and a state of more peace, of more ease, of more balance, of more joy, of self-empowerment. That's our natural state. But we've been conditioned to spend more time in the, in the sadness, in the anger, and in the fear. So that's why it's important for us to understand these vibrational frequencies. And I love the numbers in, in terms of using those to help us to really get into connection with these feeling states and understand it from a mental and an emotional perspective. When we look at the numbers, so now that you know a little bit about the numbers and the feeling states associated with them, you can go and look at your calendar each day and go, okay, well, if Monday today is a five energy day, then I know tomorrow is going to be a six. And then I know Wednesday is going to be a seven, Thursday is going to be an eight, and, and Friday is going to be a nine energy day. And then we start over again with one. So you can go through the week now that you know today is a five energy day, and you can just mark it on your calendar what the energies are going to be for the rest of the month and track it for yourself. See what feelings arise for you on those days and start to develop your own relationship with those numbers. And then you can use tools like the feeling wheels to go, okay, so if I'm feeling this and it's a, it's a three energy day and I'm feeling depressed, I can tap into maybe doing something creative today to pull me out of that depression because that's on the opposite side of the feeling wheel. So there is a lot of power in being able to understand these frequencies and understand how easy it is to shift from one state to another. But if I wanted to, I'll just show you this again real quick. If I wanted to shift from depression to feeling um, powerful, that could be a little more challenging. You can do it, but you see how depression is over here in the sad and powerful is down here. It's not directly across. So it would be a little bit more challenging to shift from depressed to powerful than it would be to shift from depressed to creative. It's just, it just, if you stay in these pie pieces that are directly opposite one another, it's easier to make the shift because their frequency state, if you measure them in actual scientific hertz, the frequency states of these emotions are very similar in the pie pieces that are across from each other. So there is a science behind what I'm saying. And you can play with it yourself now as you go throughout the month and see what you're experiencing and start developing your own awareness and relationship with the numbers and how they correlate to your emotional states and, and play with like, okay, can I tap into some of that higher energy? Just get curious about it and see what you can do. And if you're interested in learning how to master these things, and I know many of you here, are, I think, I don't know, Stephanie, have you already, you've already taken the brain game too, haven't you with someone? Yeah. So everyone here has done the brain game, which, which, Go ahead and Stephanie, tell me like now that you've um, already taken the brain game, like how does this added layer of the numbers help you understand your feelings and the tools you learned in the brain game better? It's like another layer, um, just being able to look at it in, I guess, maybe a, a practical um, piece of the equation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you excited to try it out? Yes, <laughs> very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. How about you, Fiona? You're just finishing up your first brain game journey, huh? I'm kind of in the middle of it. We're on week six. Oh, okay. I'm actually, I'm learning it, but I'm doing learning it through a self-study. 
So I'm finding that a bit strange because I'm not having feedback and I'm not having any group interaction, but mm -hmm. I'm also teaching it. So I'm self-studying and teaching, which is kind of, um, I'm finding that quite challenging, to be honest. A few times I've almost reached out to others and said, is there a group I can join as well? So I can have a fuller experience, but I guess it would be too much. So I'm just kind of going yeah yeah and you're in that sixth week which is all about that trust again so even in yeah. that look at the week you're in in your in your brain game journey mm -hmm. and those emotional states often correlate to the week number you're in so yeah, yeah just learning to trust more and trusting that that journey that you're on and trusting yourself and your own intuition which is definitely a sixth thing for sure mm -hmm. yeah 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 so you can definitely bring the numbers in and what you learned here today to start to understand a little bit deeper. And you're, you're right in the middle of it. So yeah, you haven't even gotten quite to the point of, of you're just starting to enter that, that shifting into that creative process of how you can use those frequencies and those emotional frequencies to really help you to start to create what you want and and mm -hmm. use that emotional mastery to your benefit and really leverage it so that's exciting it's an exciting place to be for sure yeah adrian how about you uh just one more layer of learning <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 this one just hit me i've been doing the brain game for three years now and and um it just hit me like earlier this year I was like oh look at that <laughs> I was just yeah. looking at the feeling wheel one day and I was like well I'll be darn <laughs> it makes I sense they would, I wish they would teach this to like kids like this is my biggest thing like I have a I have a nine-year-old um in my life now and yeah, just trying to get her to tap into how she feels and stuff like that. She's um she's a ruling number three, so you know that's a challenge. But it's um yeah, the the mother is texting saying you know um don't talk to her about numerology or astrology or anything like that, and uh... it's very difficult because it's like you know people are allowed to believe what they want to believe. And even just like kids learning the feeling wheel at, at that age, because at nine, like she is so smart. Like she yeah. skunked Mark playing cards <laughs> on the weekend. Like she, you know, like, so yeah. it's almost kind of like one of those things where like, this should be something that kids get taught in school. Oh, absolutely. I agree a hundred percent. And yeah. hopefully in the years to come, we will move into that because, um, you know, there's, it's quite intentional that it's not taught in school right now, but of course we're shifting the way that we do things. And, and so hopefully in years to come, it will be something that is a staple in, and foundational for our educational system so that we can so. all thrive. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I I really see that as as where we're headed, even though it doesn't look like it at all right now. But I, you know, that I have some big nine energy in my chart and I, you know, I can see like where, you know, things are coming apart right now and they look like they're getting more restricted. And in some ways they are, but it's just part of the collapse of everything. And, and, and the, the thing that has to happen to open up that vacuum in order to create something new, you know? And so um, just trusting that that is coming, right? And sometimes that's hard to do, but we can see that. And in the meantime, you know, we can use this. You don't have to talk to her about numerology, but you can use the numerology and what you know about it to talk to her in a language that she understands as a three, right? And yeah you know, speaking to her in that way, she'll start to listen more and be more open to what you have to say if you're speaking to her through the, the, the language of her number. And, um, and that's how you can use it in that type of situation and still be able to leverage that power of understanding those frequencies and, the, and how the quantum field is working and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really hard bouncing her between parents it's it's oh, frustrating yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Frustrating. Where's that on the pie? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's one of my favorite emotions, unfortunately. So yeah, but you know, it, it really gives us a, a chance to move into that opposite pie of the empowerment and knowing, okay, well, I have certain constraints that someone's placing on me and I don't have control over that, but I can still leverage this information. I can be clever about how I do it. <laughs> And just, you know, bring that in, in a way that, um, you know, is helpful to everyone. It's not to be manipulative. It's to really just be able to create that peace and balance with everyone to, you know, not freak anyone out because there's different personalities you're dealing with and belief systems, but you get to also embrace who you are and you are a numerologist. You are studying this information. You are a coach. You, you know, you do understand the feeling stuff. You've been through brain game now twice. And, you know, yeah. um, I think that that is really important is that you get to, because this is where the law of teaching kicks in. You want to share this information because it's changing your life and your experience. So you want to share it with the rest of the world, especially with the people closest to you. And yeah. so that's very natural. That's, you know, this is a universal law. Yes. This is, go this is going on my fridge, by the way. I'm going to put this on my fridge and awesome. it's, yeah, it's going to be out in the open if they like it or not. And yeah, because we need to, it needs to be integrated into our daily lives. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so powerful when you, when you do that, because you know what it's done for you. And so you want to share that with the people you love for sure. And, and if you are a coach, you want to share that with your clients. There's just so many um, valuable tools here to, to, you know, understanding the, that emotions are frequency states and that we can play with and alchemize those frequency states and, and create a stronger foundation for ourselves emotionally, mentally, physically and spiritually by doing that. So yeah, mm. any other last comments or questions before we go? Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm so glad that you uh, were able to make it live. And even if you're here on the replay, if you have questions or comments, please do put them in the comments and I will come back and answer them as I'm able. And Fiona, did you have one more thing? I just wanted to say thank you for that comment about children because I've been feeling that very strongly too. And a good friend of mine is a teacher and she emailed me the other night saying she just wanted to give up yeah. because of the things she's seeing in the school and the fact she can't talk to them and she can't counsel. And I just out of nowhere emailed back and said, look, I've got a couple of ideas. Just remember the ones in your class. You're leading them. You're a star to them. You're a light to them. Yeah. And don't ever forget that you're so brave walking in that classroom day after day and things are going to change. And I can feel it so strongly. I'm like, I live down the road from joy and it's like, I got to talk to her at some point because it's coming in brain yeah. game for children. And I can, every time I say it, my whole body goes tingling, my hair stand on end. And I'm like, we're so close to that. It's time she might even be working on it as we speak. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised, but I know we're so close to it coming into the world because it's changing my life. I'm seeing my client change literally in front of my eyes. Yeah. And if that's someone in their 60s, what can it do to someone under 10? Yeah. Or in their teenage years. So I find that really exciting. So thanks so much for saying that. And I think we're we're literally on the edge of that manifesting into, into our world. Cause it's, yeah. and I'm sure Kristen's right. Things maybe just need to die a little bit more, but we're at the point where it's just about to go like this. And that's just how it feels to me. It feels so right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Fiona. I, I'm definitely feeling the tingles in my body right now with you speaking too. So I'm picking up on that from you. And, you know, there, there is, um, I mean, we're in the seven energy year right now. So we're in this, you know, really it's like cutting away, releasing attachments. Um, and also seven is about, you know, uh, taking what's there and making it better. So we're still working with what we already have and trying to make it better. And as we move through 2024, which will be eight and 
then nine will be that completion year of this particular cycle. Then we move into 2026, where we'll start a brand new cycle. And I think that that's where we'll start really developing like totally new innovative ways of doing things. But right now we're, we're, still, we're still in that place of, okay, well, we see this isn't working. What can we do to make it better? Take what we have here, work with the foundation we already have. And I think in the next three years, we'll discover that a lot of those things are just going to have to go away completely and be replaced with something totally new. But for right now, that's the stage we're in and that's okay. And we are making things a little better in the process this year, but it is, um, it's a pretty challenging year you know, letting go of those attachments to the way we've been taught and the way we've been doing things for so long. And yeah, so we're in that right now, you know, so, but there is light at the end of the tunnel for the people who have that visionary ability and the nine, nine ability, right? In their chart, we can see, hang in there, guys. It is going to get better. It's already better, we just don't necessarily see it all around us yet. We don't see the physical evidence. And this is another reason why it's helpful to be able to feel into the energies because you can feel the shift. You can feel the uplift if you choose to tap into it, even though you can't see it necessarily with your physical eyes yet. So, yeah, I love you guys so much. Thank you for joining today. And um, if you're watching on the replay and you have any questions, you want any information about the brain game, you've heard from three other people who've taken brain game journeys themselves and or are teaching it to other people as well. And so, you know, from their testimonials as well, like huge, huge life changes come through when you take this program. And that's why I love to teach it. So love you guys so much. And I will see you again in all the spaces. Have an incredible full moon and use your tools as you're navigating all those emotions. Thank <laughs> Bye -bye you. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>